Woohoo! Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna do a little project on a Toyota Tundra. Okay, so the project that we're gonna do is she's got these flush mount lights in the back bumper and they haven't been wired up. There's a light bar up top and that one has been wired up. There's a light right there where that isn't wired. We're gonna add one right there. But we're gonna do the same here. We're gonna wire that light up and we're gonna add a light. And then we're gonna add four switches. So she bought these, so she bought these switches. I don't know how well it's showing up on camera, but they're like this one says LED light bar rear lights LED pod lights and bumper light bar so obviously depending on what light is what switch and then so the the light bar that's up on top on top of the cab right now is running off of this switch in this location and she doesn't like it so we're gonna move that over to one of these switches I think it's the one that says LED light bar and all four switches are gonna mount in this which goes right there so i'm gonna have to kind of modify it and custom build an abs plate uh but it shouldn't be too bad so let's get it For sure okay so this is that switch and lots of aftermarket wiring going on in this truck so I'm gonna have to be careful not to disturb anything
guys see how that white wires run up there. And then it pops out right there. I don't like that and it will be changed. So I think what we're gonna do here, instead of cutting this wire and re-splicing it back together is I'm just gonna try and de-pin it so I can pull it back through into the cab and then bring it back out into here. So let's see if I can de-pin this sucker. Got it. Okay, that wire's in the cap. Now the next wire I want to kind of deal with is this red one. This I'm guessing went to some kind of an ignition source because there's there's already a, a fused power source. And then that red wire was just stabbed in this open relay. It was like right there. Which is probably ignition. So, let's pull this one back. Here's that whole switch harness. Pulled out. Now we're gonna have to use some of this because this plugs into the harness that goes up to the light, but these three wires can be rewired to the new switch. And she already has a relay for the cab light bar. So we're good there. Let me show you what I've got going on. So, I've got two two conductors for power and ground that will power the switches. These are three two conductors that come from the switches to power the lights. Right here, I've opened up those two conductors and separated out the ground, which will ground at this factory ground. This red is gonna come from the new switch and trigger this relay. Now, it just so happens that the old switch also triggered a positive. So once I push the switch, that'll send 12 volts on this wire which will trigger this relay which will turn on that existing light bar these are going to get grounded factory ground and then run down and attach to that light the light that'll be there that light the light that'll be there and the light that'll be in here so, uh, in the vehicle, I have, these are those three wires that are going, going to go to the lights, and these are my two powers and grounds to power these switches. Now, originally, before I looked into any of this, I thought I would run those switches to some relays. However, in doing my research, these switches already have single pull, single throw relays built in, and they're capable of carrying 20 amps a switch at 12 volts. I looked up the consumption of the lights, and those little pod lights are 
uh, 43 watts and each pod then would run just under four amps so four times four is 16 so we're under our 20 amps and I think we're gonna be fine not running uh, a, an a, a external sorry words an external relay so I'm gonna continue and I'll bring you back So I had to change my plan a little bit and I ended up having to junction this anyway off that new switch, but that's all right. I used a solderable butt connector, so it's all, be all weatherproof. I'm gonna ground everything right here at this factory ground point. And I'm gonna, so I have this connector for like up to a 10 gauge so i have no doubt that four 18 gauges will fit but to give it a more factory look i'm gonna peel this yellow part off and it just leaves me with this and it'll just look better Now you're probably thinking he forgot one but i don't believe that it did because i don't believe that that is going to be needed but i'm leaving it out here just in case definitely tell the difference between what I did and what somebody else did okay guys next day here I had to break off this project my son graduates today and we had a graduation party for him yesterday so I'm back I have these switches wired up but basically this is what we have soldered connections soldered heat shrink butt connector connections then you have out to the device, battery power. Now these are uh, for different lights and I'm actually gonna tap into the light here so when you turn on the lights, these lights come on. Uh, otherwise they'd be on all the time if you had these running off the battery uh, or they would only come on with the ignition. So I'm gonna do a little something different with these. I know it looks kind of a mess right now, but this will all clean up nicely and tuck back there in that plate that I'm gonna build. Uh, also, I got all the lights put on. So now she's got the four pod lights and the bar. And if you remember, her license plate was right here. And that covered up that bumper light. So what I did is, since she had the front view camera in there, I cut it off. I'm waiting for some paint to dry. I'll mount the camera back on there. And then I'm just going to mount this plate. I'll center it up. And we'll mount this plate uh, so that she can have her front license plate where we're from here in washington state a front license plate is required so she's got to retain that I've got a piece of ABS and I'm just using 
my drill and like an eighth inch drill bit here on it to cut out these holes for these rocker switches. They give you two ways to wire these switches and I'm gonna do it a little bit different. So they give you wiring method A and wiring method B. Wiring method A will say accessory switched power source, lower light will turn on when the key is turned on. So basically there's two lights built into these switches so that you can read the writing and see the little graphic that they have on them. And wiring method B is lower light will turn on only when the switch is turned to the on position. So let's see if I can set you guys up here and give you this little graphic. So I don't know if you can see that, but it shows on A, lower light will turn on when the key is turned on. You've got your two grounds. And if you look down here on the legend, it'll tell you that terminal eight is the upper light negative and terminal seven is the lower light negative. So I did, I grounded both of those, no problem. Terminal number two is incoming from power. So this is my direct battery feed. If you want the lower light to turn on when the key is turned on, you would hook this to accessory power so that when you turn the key on, it powers the switch and the lower light. And then you have your outgoing to whatever you're gonna turn on. I am gonna bring, since I'm bringing this in from the battery, if I was to jump this over, that lower light would be on all the time. So I'm actually gonna come off the headlight switch to a relay and fire power on that only when the parking and headlights is on, okay? Are you guys following? I think you are, you're a smart crowd. So how we're gonna do that is with this relay right here. So we'll have constant battery voltage coming into pin 30. We're gonna ground either pin 85 or 86, and it doesn't matter because it's just a coil. So you could go uh, ground here or ground here, either one. Then if we put ground here, we're gonna put our headlight wire right here, and that will energize this coil and take power from here and put it out here. And then going out here, is going to go to that terminal on this switch terminal or terminal number six on the switch and when she turns the parking lights or headlights on this bottom light will come on There it is guys, so we did bumper lights in the rear, LED light strips in the bed, and then the wired up the four pod lights and the bumper light up front, built a switch plate and lit up the lights with the headlight switch and that. That's it. There you go. Thank you guys for watching. This was a bit of a challenging project just because it's hotter than the hounds of hell out here. Uh, and I did it in a gravel drive. So climbing up underneath the truck was kind of a pain in the butt. But you guys see lights, I see car parts. So thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it. We're up to like a hundred and 60, 150, 160 subs now, which is little. I'm just a little, little channel. 
but uh man i'm having a blast so thanks again guys we'll see you in the next one peace and i'm out